Welcome, my name is Lindsay, and today we have a yin yoga practice that will work through the kidney meridians. So this area is especially helpful when it's um, stimulated and tonified, it helps bring about more courage and willingness for personal change and growth. So our theming today will be around personal growth, development, courage, uh, as we work into the kidney meridian. So our yin practice will take about 45 minutes today, plus or minus. A few props that you might find to be helpful would include a bolster and some yoga blocks. If you don't have these available, you can always use some firm pillows, some rolled towels, just some uh, something that has a little bit of squish, but also um, doesn't completely go flat when you lay in it. So welcome and thank you again for joining us. Our first practice today in our yin sequence is a butterfly pose that we will be supported using a bolster at the back of the body. We'll set our bolster up kind of lengthwise here. It's gonna support and open the chest for us. We're gonna bring the hips to the base of the bolster. And we're gonna walk the feet towards each other, opening the soles of the feet towards each other, opening the knees out nice and wide. And slowly, gently lower yourself down onto the bolster. Allow yourself to get comfortable. Starting to settle in, you might spread the shoulder blades a little wider on the back of the body, maybe a gentle tucking of the chin. If this feels too intense in the hip joints to have them open um, right away, you can bring a block gently underneath the knees just to provide a little bit of support underneath the knees. You may find that that's helpful or not helpful. But we'll be taking this posture for five minutes. So as we rest here in our supported butterfly posture, I invite you to bring the palms out towards the sides facing the sky, getting a little more broadness across the chest. And in our yin practice, because we hold the postures for about five minutes, plus or minus, it can be more of a challenge to keep our mind focused and staying present with us instead of allowing the mind to kind of wander or escape the sensations that we're experiencing. So we'll start with a tuning in of our awareness to the sensations of the body. So I invite us to begin with a full body scan, starting with the tips of the toes and moving towards the tops of the head. We'll begin to check in with all the different areas of the body. Noticing subtle sensation, noticing bigger sensations. Maybe noticing something as subtle as the air on our skin. Maybe moving into the sensation of opening. The sensation of stretch. And you'll be aware of these deeper sensations of stretching. We want to be aware if we begin to notice any pain, any shooting pain, any hot pain, anything that is extremely uncomfortable. If you notice any of these areas, experiencing that intense, painful sensation. I invite you to make your way out of postures and reapply props and supports that allow you to re-enter a posture, but without that pain. Continue your full body scan, checking in with all the different areas of the body. And notice if there's any muscle gripping, 
maybe the muscles of the glutes are still slightly engaged to help protect that hip joint or to keep it from relaxing fully. Maybe there's some gripping in the shoulders. Maybe there's some gripping in the hands or the toes, in the neck, in the lower back. Just notice if you are experiencing any of that muscle engagement or that muscle gripping. And we'll take a deep inhale, focusing our awareness on that gripping, on that area. And use our long, slow, deep exhale to encourage more relaxation and release into that area. Continuing the breath like that, the inhale to focus on the area that could benefit from some additional relaxation. And then using the exhale, to invite more release, more softness. One more time, inhaling fully. And exhaling to release any of that tightness or tension. Staying here in our mindfulness, our awareness, continuing to breathe out muscle tension and invite more ease with every round of breath. a nice full inhale, exhaling to release any of that tightness or muscle engagement. We'll start to make our way out of this posture. Bringing the hands to the outer thighs, slowly help lift the knees back up to neutral. Planting the feet. Take a breath here, just feeling that sensation in the hips and the lower back. We'll start to press into the palms. Use your core strength, slowly lift yourself. The hands press down into the floor, the feet still plant into the ground, knees up towards the sky. You're gonna start to windshield wiper the knees from side to side, nice and slow. Begin to lift and lower the knees from side to side. Taking a moment here in our rebound postures. Wow, to let the blood flow back to the joints. Wonderful. Starting to pause our windshield wiper. We'll bring ourselves into a comfortable seated posture. Maybe the legs are crossed. 
Maybe the feet are planted with the knees up towards the sky. We'll start to draw the belly in, lengthen through the spine, soften in the shoulders. Blink the eyes closed here. Take a moment to tune in internally. And we'll take a moment to create a dedication or an intention, our sankalpa for today's practice, our heartfelt desire. And I invite you to maybe consider a sankalpa based around health or personal growth. Maybe something like, what would you like to focus your new courage towards? What would courage allow me to do? So I invite you to spend a moment thinking about those ideas, those themes, creating a positive statement using I am or it is to begin your sankalpa. based around personal courage or growth. Once you've created that sankalpa, take three deep breaths as you repeat that sankalpa mentally to yourself three times. Back to the third time, you can blink the eyes back open, give the shoulders a little roll forward, up, back, and down. We can bring the bolster off the mat, and if you'd like, we'll be moving into our dragon pose. So maybe having some blocks nearby might be helpful in getting into this posture. So we'll begin by making our way into a downward facing dog. Starting from tabletop, bring the wrists underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. Tuck the toes back behind you, and as you exhale, push the hips up towards the sky. Press the shoulders back, lift the sitting bones up towards the sky. Stretch in through the backs of the legs. Now we'll bring the gaze up towards the top of the mat, starting with the left side first, coming into our dragon posture. Start to lift the left heel up towards the sky, draw the left knee in towards the chest, rock forward on the wrist. I'm gonna plant that left foot onto the floor up by the hands. Start to heel toe that left foot forward. This is where the blocks might be helpful. If finding some space for that left foot, it's a little challenging. You can lift up onto blocks. We're gonna to start to heel toe that left foot towards the outer edge of the mat, just getting nice and wide here in through the hips. So continue to bend that left knee and we're gonna lower the right knee down towards the floor, untucking those right toes. So again, you might choose to stay lifted up on the blocks as you make your way into our proud dragon. Staying up on the blocks, so you might choose to bring the blocks up towards the side if you find that you don't want them today. You can lower down onto the palms, working into the wrists, or you can come up onto your knuckles. We're going to continue to press the hips forward, stretching that thigh, opening the chest. We'll spend two minutes in this posture. So I invite you as you sit in your proud dragon to bring back to mind that dedication or that intention, our sankalpa that we created at the beginning of practice.
noticing if the mind wants to wander away in these kind of deeper postures. Aim to bring the mind back to that dedication or intention or to the sensations of the body. So you might notice a deep stretch in that right hip. You might notice compression in the left hip. As we make these observations of the senses, invite yourself to also become aware if you are finding that there's any judgment or storytelling that you're experiencing as you notice these sensations. So storytelling might be this joint has always hurt or the time that I injured it or it must be something that I'm doing. Just allow yourself to sit in the sensation without that judgment, without the storytelling. Maybe even without a qualitative aspect. No good or bad, just noticing that sensation. Take a nice, slow, deep breath here. Slowly start to come out of this posture, pressing the hips up. We're gonna make our way into our half splits. So again, a block might be helpful here as we find our space, bringing the blocks again towards the inside of that left leg. Begin to straighten the left knee, push the hips back, maybe even flex that left toe up. Find some length in the spine, maybe as you press into the blocks to help lift yourself up. And then as you exhale, we're gonna either walk the blocks forward or lower the hands down onto the floor, taking this into more of a forward fold. Softening along the backside of the body, let the head be nice and heavy. As we pause here for our two minutes in our half splits, begin to notice your breath. Feel the breath move in through the back of the body. Feeling that rise and fall of the ribs on the back side of the body. Notice the length of your breath. Allow every breath to maintain a slow and steady in and out. Have our last 30 seconds here. Maybe find a little bit more space, a little more softness into the back of the body. Releasing just a little deeper. Making our way back out of this posture, begin to push the hips forward, planting that left foot back down onto the floor. We'll bring the blocks forward again for our second side. We'll bring the left knee back to meet with the right, finding our tabletop position. And then press into the palms, tuck the toes, exhale to push the hips up towards the sky, coming in for a downward facing dog. Press the shoulders back, lift the sitting bones up towards the sky. Take a moment just to notice any changes, any differences between the left and the right side. Nice, slow, deep breath. Mm -hmm. Moving to the second side, slowly lift that right heel up. 
We'll draw the right knee in towards the chest, rocking forward on the wrist, plant the right foot down by the hands. And a heel toe that right foot forward, maybe coming up onto the blocks just to find ourselves a little bit more space. Starting to heel toe that right foot out towards the right, you'll bring the blocks or the hands to the inside of that right foot. Start to bend the right knee nice and deep, lower the left knee down. Untuck the back toes, sink the hips down just a little bit more, bend in through that right knee. So again, you might choose to stay lifted using the blocks to help support the chest, getting a little additional lift. Just noticing how that feels. Might choose to bring the hands down towards the mat. Continuing to sink down in through the hips. Nice, slow, deep breath. Starting to create our ujjayi pranayama. That subtle constriction in the throat, creating a slight vibrational tone as you inhale and exhale. So the inhale has a sensation like you're about to start snoring. It's just a very subtle constriction. And the exhale has that sensation that you are about to um, fog up a mirror, but then through the nose. Feeling that breath, that ujjayi breath, move through the body, that subtle constriction into the throat. Slowing down the breath. being aware of our breath and also being aware of any sensations we are experiencing. Maybe noticing how this side differs from the first side. Using your exhales to help press out anything that's no longer serving us. Using that exhale ah, to release any tightness or tension, any mental attitudes that we can relieve ourselves of to clear the way for personal growth and greater health. Last exhale to blow out anything that's no longer serving us. We'll start to make our way out of this posture, pressing into the palms, slowly start to lift the hips up, maybe bringing the blocks with us as we come into our half splits, heel turning the right foot just a little closer towards center line again. Rising up onto the blocks, maybe. We're just walking the hands back. Start to straighten the right knee. Flex the right toes up towards the sky. Stretching into the back of the leg. Finding a little length here into the spine. And then as you exhale, starting to soften ourselves down. Either releasing the blocks forward. Just walking the blocks forward. Maybe just lowering down a little bit. Maybe bringing the hands down towards the floor and letting the head hang heavy here. Another two minutes in this posture. Feeling that breath move in and out nice and slow. That subtle constriction of the throat, creating that ujjayi sound, that that ujjayi pranayama. That subtle construction. 
Maybe that slight rasping sound. I just thought it sounded kind of like the leaves moving through a tree. Or maybe the waves of the ocean from a distance. Have our last 30 seconds here. So see if there's just something else that you can relax or release. Maybe it's a gentle bend in the elbows. Maybe it's a little extra stretch in through the back of the leg. Wonderful. We'll start to make our way out of this posture, pressing into the palms, rebend that right knee, plant the right foot down, bring the blocks off to the side. Slowly bring that right knee back in line with the left, coming into our tabletop. From here, rocking down into our child's pose, bringing the hips and the heels towards each other, stretching the arms out nice and long. We'll just take one minute here in our child's pose. Sinking down, just letting ourselves relax. Breathe nice and deep. Taking some time to observe any sensations into the legs. Into the back, into the shoulders, maybe down into the toes, just taking some time to observe sensations. Come back to your intention or your dedication. Just repeat it to yourself again mentally. Now bring the gaze back up towards the fingers. And as you exhale, rock back up into your table. Then bend the elbows, lower yourself down onto your tummy. We'll be making our way into our sphinx pose next. So we'll draw the elbows underneath the shoulders, bringing the forearms parallel to each other. So in our Sphinx pose, we're holding it for about five minutes as well. So press into the palms, lift the chest, let the hips sink down. Scan the glutes real quick. Just notice if there's any gripping, any tightness or engagement in through the glutes. See about softening those muscles. So as we are here in our sphinx posture, if it ever becomes too intense in the lower back, you can lower the chest down just a little bit, soften, and then press yourself back into it. Scan the body again, just noticing where there's any gripping. And see if you can release that gripping as you exhale. Releasing the things that no longer serve us. Feel the sensation of the breath moving through the body. We'll, we'll take the practice of imagining the breath orbiting through the body. So as you inhale, imagining that the breath is moving through the left nostril only. 
You're breathing through both nostrils, but we're imagining that it's moving in just through the left. And we're exhaling through the right nostril. Continue imagining that you're breathing in through the left and out through the right. Following that breath down just a little bit more, inhaling through the left nostril, down through the left side of the throat, and out through the right side of the throat and the right nostril. Continue breathing in through the left nostril, down through the left throat, and into the left lung. As you exhale, breathe out through the right lung, the right side of the throat, and the right nostril. Continue following that breath, the inhale moving through the left side, and the exhale moving through the right. And as you inhale now, breathing through that left nostril, the left side of the throat, the left lung, breathe down into your left lower back. And exhale to release from the right lower back, the right lung, the right side of the throat, and the right nostril. One more minute here. Continue orbiting that breath around, in through the left, and out through the right. One more nice big breath here, inhaling through the left, exhaling through the right, and then slowly open the elbows out towards the side, lowering the torso down, coming down into our crocodile pose. We'll take two minutes here in crocodile, elbows spread out wide, legs soft, lower back relaxed, hands support the head or just allowing the head to rest on the mat. Continue to breathe in and out all the way down to the lower back. Noticing any sensations that might be arising. We have our last 30 seconds here in our crocodile pose.
Bring the hands back again underneath the shoulders. Keep the knees planted down into the ground. With our next exhale, bring ourselves into child's pose, pressing up and rocking back. Hips over the heels. Take one minute here. Maybe again, choosing to keep the arms extended out nice and long. Or maybe choosing to bring the hands back behind you, hands by the legs, coming into a nice ball shape. Breathe deeply into the lower back. Using the inhales to find expansion and space. And the exhales to release out anything that is no longer serving us. One more breath here. We'll bring the hands to the knees, towards the knees. Press into the mat, slowly round yourself up into our Virasana pose. So we're gonna sit back on the heels. If this is not available to you, maybe the stretch in the knees, maybe the sensation into the feet, you can rise yourself up to sit on a block on the high, medium, or low setting, allowing more space in the knees, less stretch in through the hip flexors. And just take a moment finding that shape. Finding a spread on the front of the chest. Noticing where you are experiencing sensation. And for our next posture, we'll be moving into a reclined virasana, supta virasana. So if you're up on a block, currently, and this is enough sensation for you here. You can stay with the block supported underneath the hips, maybe searching for more sensation by walking the hands back, feeling that stretch on the front of the thighs. If you are easily sitting on the heels in your virasana, you can bring a bolster back behind you over the feet, at the base of the hips, maybe opening the feet out as wide as the hips. You can even set down on the floor, just working a little deeper here. This might be enough for you today, just settling the hips down onto the floor, or you might choose to start to lower yourself down onto the bolster. Any sort of variation here, is welcome. If you'd like to lift the bolster up, maybe a little bit more, creating a bit of a ramp, you're welcome to do that. You might choose to keep the hands out by the sides, spreading across the chest, maybe creating some airplane wings, getting more of a spread there. Or maybe you'll gently place the hands on the feet, just providing a little bit of warmth for the feet and the toes. Take some moments here to identify any gripping in through the body using that same sense of awareness, moving through the body, releasing any gripping. Maybe it's again through the glutes or the lower back. Maybe it's through the feet or the shoulders.
give yourself some time just noticing. And then again, using the breath, that exhale to release any of the gripping. And maybe releasing any of the thoughts that are no longer serving us. Finally, if the mind is wanting to wander away from this posture or wander away from this practice, you can bring the minds back to our intention or dedication. Coming back to our sankalpa, our heartfelt desire for personal growth, courage, and transformation. Use that nice, slow, deep breath to release and relax and let go of anything that is no longer serving us today. We'll start to make our way up out of this posture. Pressing into the hands. Slowly help lift yourself back up. Rising again back into our Virasana posture. Take a nice slow deep breath, just feeling into the sensations. Noticing the lower back, the legs the chest. We'll roll over the legs and extend the legs straight out in front of us, bringing the bolster over towards the side. Coming into our staff pose, we'll extend the legs out nice and long, toes flex up towards the sky. Pressing down into the palms, flex the toes, Keep the engagement in through the legs, just gently. Hands down by the hips, either pressing down into the floor or depending on the length of the torso, maybe they're slightly elevated or they have to bend a little bit. Take a moment here in observation of the sensations. 
maybe the lower back. Maybe finding that broadness in through the collarbones. Maybe that gentle engagement of the belly. Allow the mind to stay focused in our practice, feeling the breath, feeling the sensations of the body, and coming back to our dedication or intention as needed. We'll start to move into our forward fold, our caterpillar pose. So using that bolster or a pillow, we'll bring it over onto our lap. Uh, you might find that you'd like a little extra lift here for our posture and the bolster doesn't quite provide enough lift. You can bring the bolster up onto the tall side if that helps. And for our caterpillar pose, we just Gently round ourselves over the legs. As you take this forward fold, you might find that you have a little bit more space. You can soften in just a little bit more. Maybe using the hands to help support the head. We'll take five minutes here. Let the head be nice and heavy. Breathing in to the back body. Let the belly be nice and heavy here. Nice, soft belly. Using the inhales to expand the chest and the exhales to breathe out anything that's no longer serving us. Maybe finding more space with each exhale. Begin to orbit the breath now in the opposite direction. So we'll start to inhale through the right nostril, in through the right side of the throat, the right side of the lungs, and down into the right lower back. And the exhale moves from the left lower back, the left lungs, the left side of the throat, and out through the left nostril. Continuing to orbit the breath in the opposite direction, moving in on the right side, all the way down to your sacrum, and exhaling from the left side of the sacrum and out through the left nostril. We'll have two more minutes here. 
Continuing to be aware of the breath and of the sensations in the body. Slowly starting to make our way out of this posture, drawing the belly in, begin to round yourself all the way back up through seated. Staying nice and tall in the spine here for a moment. Maybe closing the eyes and just experiencing the sensation as we rebound. Take the bolster off towards the side, starting to move into our final posture, Shavasana. Lowering ourselves down onto the floor, making space for the legs to open it wide as the mat or wider. Lowering the torso down, bringing the hands down by the sides, palms face the sky. Little tucking of the shoulders back behind us. A little lengthening of the tailbone towards the heels, a tucking of the chin towards the chest, taking some time here in our Shavasana, allowing our body to integrate all those deep stretches and long holds. Releasing the Ujjayi breath if you are still maintaining it. And bring your sankalpa or your heartfelt desire to mind one more time. And slowly releasing that dedication or intention, allowing the mind to rest here as the body rests. The breath moves naturally in and out.
Take a nice, full, deep inhale. Starting to bring a little bit of movement back into the fingers and the toes. With your next inhale, reach the arms up overhead and point the toes towards the short edge of the mat. Stretch the front side of the body. As you exhale, draw the knees into the chest, giving yourselves a nice big hug. Maybe a gentle rock from side to side, massaging up the lower back. We'll make our way over onto our side body, resting in a fetal position. Taking some time here with the eyes closed to the gaze, gently softened. Take a moment here to feel a sense of gratitude towards yourself. For prioritizing your health, for being courageous as you approach the day. As you're ready, slowly, gently help yourself to rise back up into a comfortable seated posture. The eyes again closed to the gaze, oh, very light, gazing at nothing. Just take a moment to feel the physical body, the mental body, and the emotional body. We'll take an inhale together, lifting the arms up overhead. And exhale, draw the hands down through heart center. May our practice be of benefit to all people. Namaste.